we do heritability estimates? Well, heritability isn't just how much money you get from your parents. It's a very specific thing, and it's not, inherit it's not heredity. It's a very specific uh, thing that we use a lot in our field genetics, and most doctors don't know what it means. It is the proportion of variability due to genes for any, any trait we look at. So if I take an example that you all are a population have a trait, and that trait, for example, might be how quickly you fall asleep in lectures. Okay? And there's a, there's a few already whose eyes <laughs> are getting a bit heavy. See my droning, boring voice just that puts them to sleep. Whereas others, however much I drone on, for hour after hour with the temperature right up, will be wide awake, alert, taking notes, and will never fall asleep. And others are somewhere in the middle. And that's the variation for any trait. Okay, so if we looked at the heritability of falling asleep in lectures, this would be how we would do it. We'd compare the identical twins, the non-identical twins, look at the similarity, come up with the result. And that's what it would tell us. And it's, it's quite a specific thing. And if we take a, an example here of uh, that, that test, this is a typical result. We see in blue what's due to our genes, and the rest of it we divide into the environment, which in green would be the random environment. So that might be the temperature here today. It might be your neighbor. It might be the, how comfy the seat is. It might be all sorts of random factors, what you ate this morning, how much coffee you had for breakfast. And then this other little area here is what we call the family environment. And that would be what you shared with your brother or sister when you, when you were growing up together. Some of you might still live together, in which case it's still being shared. Uh, that's quite unusual, but there are mostly, most people live together up to about the age of 18, and everything they share up to that point is shared environment. And we used to think that was very important for most traits. Uh, we, we generally see it's lower than we thought, and that's really the influence of the family. Okay, so that's the family you shared. And that's, we can also measure with these studies. Okay, so that's what makes up the differences between you, are these particular genes, the outside world, the environment, and your original family bits. They're the, they're the components which uh, make up what we do. And we've done this now for hundreds of diseases and traits. And I'm just going to go through a few of them. Everyone has their own favorites. The few at the top here, there's one here which most of you won't be able to see. It's called myopia. Um, <laughs> The old jokes are the best. <laughs> uh, Short-sightedness, freckles, and corneal thickness, which is the, the, the thickness of your lens, which is, again, related to the eye. And they're all the top ones. Now, one reason they're the top, the highest, that means 90% heritable, okay? Hardly any environmental component. One reason that they're, they're very high is actually they're quite easy to measure. It's quite easy to count freckles directly. It's quite easy to measure the thickness of your lens with these very good eye instruments. And myopia is quite also easy to measure because uh, optometrists do it for us and uh, you send in your prescriptions. And these have been good areas to find genes for. And then there are other ones which are less known about acne, which is strangely very genetic. It's nothing to do with eating chocolate or I mean, not washing enough. Height, as you know, that's classically genetic. And then you've got osteoporosis, diabetes, obesity, that's another one, 70% genetic, and it's increasing a lot. So why is that increasing? So why obesity and myopia are increasing, but they're very heritable. So again, it means it's not just nature versus nurture. The two are going together somehow. So some recent changes in envir environment, like having McDonald's everywhere, can suddenly just change our threshold so that uh, people before where food was harder to get or people didn't have the sort of income to, to feed themselves constantly all day have changed that environment so some people with those same genes become fat. And the same thing is with myopia. It's particularly in kids that uh, people are needing glasses. And if you look in Asian countries where 80% of teenagers now wear glasses, it's because they just don't go outdoors much. So they're, they're not playing out, they're not doing long distance stuff, they're looking very closely at 
Game Boys and computers, etc. And this is the thing that can tip it over. So just a subtle change in the environment. The genes are always there, but they, were in a way, weren't short-sighted if they were playing outside and focusing on the distance. So they used to say the Eskimos never used to wear glasses until recently because they were always on looking on the horizon for the polar bear. Okay? Suddenly, you know, mobile phones and Game Boys come along and they're more interested in that than the polar bear and they get myopia. So sometimes these subtle things can change what is genetic. Now, you can see that this list here, that nearly everything we've measured is in some way heritable. And they, there's funny ones here that are hard to measure, like varicose veins and hemorrhoids. They say there's only two per type of person with hemorrhoids, those that uh, report having them and those that are lying. <laughs> Despite that, we still got 50% heritability. People are embarrassed by it, but they still tell you. Uh, the, the, the data still show that it's, it's, it's still heritable. Uh, and then you've got other things like the timing of when your periods start and stop, uh, as well as your blood pressure. So there's pretty much everything in general that we can measure medically is heritable. And the early critics of uh, twin studies used to say, well, that's, things are heritable because the mums treated them differently. Your mums treated your, your identical twins more similarly than non-identical twins. And some people believed them, and they thought that twin studies were a load of rubbish, that they were overestimating everything, and that they found everything was genetic. That was until the 1980s, and a group in Minnesota started finding these twins who were reared apart. And they found about 112 pairs of these twins, and they brought them in for a whole week of testing, even more than you guys get. Uh, it was very intensive, and they didn't let them speak to each other, and they got all their secrets and compared them, and they found pretty much the same results as when twins had been brought up together. Quite amazing. And some of the stories, like the, the tale of two gyms in Ohio, there were two identical twins, and one found the other one at the age of 50, and they'd been separated at the age of three, and... It turned out they'd been living about 30 miles apart most of their lives. They'd both been married twice. They both uh, had the, the, the first wife had the same name. They both took their holidays on the same beach in Florida. And they both drove a blue Chevrolet. Both liked Budweiser Light and um, I think it was Camel cigarettes. And they both had the same hobby of woodwork and amazing similarities, and both worked as a part-time uh, police, policeman. So the only difference between them, one liked his hair in an Elvis style, and the other was more like uh, the Beatles. So there are lots of these anecdotal stories. Not all of them were quite as uh, amazing as that. But it did show that you couldn't explain the similarity of identical twins just on the basis of how their mother had treated them, because there are lots of cases of identical twins having different mothers with the same result. Luckily for the twins, and sadly for our research, there aren't that many twins reared apart anymore. They used to do this as part of the social planning. If there was a poor mother uh, from a poor background and they were up for adoption, they used to split the kids. Don't do that anymore. But we do have, I think, three pairs of uh, separated twins in our, in our data set, who are very interesting, but as I said, just like the rest of you, really. Uh -huh.